my five favorite Vanguard ETFs to put in your portfolio. In this video, I'll show you five of the best exchange traded funds for a complete portfolio that covers stocks, bonds, and real estate that provides a high dividend yield and takes the stress out of investing. We're talking Vanguard ETFs today on Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel and I want to send a special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, all you Bowtie citizens out there know how much I love the core satellite strategy of investing. That strategy of putting half or more of your money in a group of exchange traded funds that are going to give you a diversified exposure to a few themes and asset classes then using the rest of your money to find those runaway stocks. It not only takes the stress out of investing, but makes it so much easier as well. But then the question becomes, which are the best ETFs to buy for my portfolio? So to answer that question, I'm teaming up with Griffin Milks to create a list of ETFs perfect for your portfolio. In his video, Griffin highlighted his top five ETFs for 2021, and I love this list because he's got a great mix of those core index ETFs, the funds covering a broad section of the market, but he also includes some specialty ETFs in clean energy, medical devices, and even sports betting. In this video, I'm going to add five of my favorite Vanguard ETFs to the mix to give you that base of picks. I'll show you why I picked the Vanguard Exchange Traded Funds, why I like each of these, and why it should be a part of your portfolio. And these five are going to be a great fit for Griffin's ETF picks as well, so make sure you look for that link to his video in the description below and check that out. I'm highlighting Vanguard funds because it's really a one-stop for ETFs, with 75 funds in all the core themes and assets. You can find funds for bonds, both government and corporate bonds, stocks, and different segments. For example, by different company sizes and international stocks, you can get emerging market ETFs as well as those covering the sectors and specialty funds. Now, Vanguard funds are commission free on most platforms and there's no initial minimum or account balance if you invest directly through Vanguard. What I really like about Vanguard funds though are the rock bottom expense ratios on the ETFs. Vanguard funds charge an average 0.06% annual expense ratio. That's just 60 cents for every thousand dollars you have invested in these. You compare that with the industry average of 0.25% expense ratio on other ETFs, and it might not seem like much difference, but you see how it adds up with these Vanguard expenses here in red versus the average ETF fee, potentially saving you over $30,000 in three decades of investing. Now, before we get to that list of the five best Vanguard ETFs to buy, I want to talk about exchange traded funds versus mutual funds because I still see a lot of investors out there in these older investments. Now, ETFs and mutual funds are the exact same concept, a group of stocks or other assets that you can buy with just one fund. The difference here though is how these are managed and the fees that you're going to pay. Mutual funds are usually sold through an advisor because they get kickbacks for selling them. Whereas you buy ETFs through any investing platform, mutual funds are usually sold through an advisor because they get kickbacks called load fees when they sell them. You could pay upwards of 5% whenever you buy or sell a mutual fund, money that comes out of your pocket and goes straight to the salesperson. Now, Mutual funds are also as much as four times more expensive to hold versus ETFs. The average annual expense ratio on these mutual funds is 1%, and we saw what kind of a difference that paying 0.06% rather than 0.25% average ETF fee was. Now, can you imagine how much money you'll lose paying four times that amount just to invest in mutual funds? So unless you're investing through a 401k at work or some other program where your only choice is to pick mutual funds, go with these five Vanguard ETFs. Our first fund, the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, ticker VIG, holds shares of over 200 US stocks, all within that dividend achievers group, companies growing their dividends for at least 10 consecutive years. Now, watching Griffin's video and his ETF portfolio, there is a lot of growth there with his small cap ETF and that sports betting play, but I wanted to add some income here because who doesn't like getting paid while they invest? The Dividend Appreciation Fund pays just under a 2% dividend yield and has produced a 12.7% annual return over the last decade. That's enough to more than triple your investment in 10 years. More than just those returns though, the fund is diversified across sectors of the economy and holds a lot in those safer areas like, like consumer staples, telecom, and utilities. That means it's gonna do well whether the economy is booming or not and really smooth out your portfolio. The expense ratio for this one is 
that low 0.06% that we'll see in most of these funds. So basically nothing to get a broad fund of dividend payers and not have to worry about buying or selling your own stocks. Next here, I'm adding the Vanguard Long-Term Corporate Bond ETF, ticker VCLT, for that element of safety and cash flow in case the stock market falls apart. Now bonds are a tough asset class right now because interest rates are creeping higher, which means bond returns are pretty much gonna be flat but double digit returns aren't the reason you buy bonds. You buy bonds for that what if scenario. What if the stock market crashes? You know, what if interest rates do drop? When stocks plunged 35% in March of last year, this bond ETF was down 25% at one point, but rebounded a lot more quickly and was even by July. It took stocks another three months beyond that to reach their prior levels. So bonds are not only gonna give you that consistent payout. Now this fund pays a 3.2% dividend yield, but if the market does crash again, you can shift some of that investment in bonds to take advantage of those cheaper stock prices. The Vanguard bond fund is invested exclusively in investment grade companies, those with the very best credit ratings and the financials to go with it. And it holds over 2,400 separate bonds in this ETF. And even though that safety and stability is what we're focused on here, the returns haven't been bad either. The long-term bond fund has produced an 8.25% annual return over the last 10 years and charges an even lower 0.05% expense ratio. Now we still got three more Vanguard funds to highlight and stick around because the last two are in my favorite sectors for this year. Two groups of stock that pay higher dividends and are primed for growth. First though, I wanna personally invite you to get the Daily Bowtie, my daily market newsletter with all the important news, stock market trends, and what to watch all delivered straight to your inbox the night before so you have time to plan. It's your opportunity to be a smarter investor in less than five minutes a day. This is something completely new for this year, something I've been wanting to do for you out there in the community for a long time, and it's totally free. So look for that link in the video description below to sign up. Rounding out the three major asset classes, I wanna add the Vanguard Real Estate Index ETF, that's ticker VNQ for that property exposure to the list. The fund invests in 180 real estate companies with a great diversification across property types and some of my favorite REITs like the American Tower, Prologis, and Digital Realty. Now, those of you in the nation know I'm a big believer in real estate. It's where I got my professional start as a commercial property analyst, and I love the cash flow from rentals. And while it hasn't been the best sector over the last year, the fund has still produced a solid 8.6% annual return over the last decade and pays a 4% dividend yield, the highest in our list of Vanguard funds. So real estate is a little like bonds here, and that idea that you need that diversification outside of stocks just in case the market takes a giant dump. You'll collect that higher dividend yield and smooth out your returns over time. Now, along with the fund here, I'd also consider adding a few of those individual real estate investment trusts, those REIT companies to the portfolio for that extra growth. These last two funds are in my favorite stock sectors right now. First here, the Vanguard Financials ETF, ticker VFH, and it's 2.2% dividend yield. Stocks in the financial sector are booming and the fund is already up 23% in the last three months. As rates increase, the banks and insurance companies are gonna make more money on those rate spreads and invest in their excess cash. And besides the return here, it's a great way to hedge that market risk because rising rates are really what's hitting the market lately. So with this fund, you can actually benefit from one of the market's major weak points. The ETF holds shares of over 400 companies across the sector, including banks, asset managers, and insurance, and with some of the best names like JP Morgan, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, and Bank of America. Now, Vanguard's sector ETFs charge a little higher expense ratios at 0.10%, but that's still less than half the average fee on most exchange-traded funds, and this one has produced a 10.5% annual return over the last decade. And here I also want to add the Vanguard Healthcare ETF, ticker VHT, for its 1.2% dividend yield and what could be one of the best returns of these five funds. Healthcare is my other favorite sector for the year. This fund is already up 16% in the last three months and beating the market. And while Griffin did include a medical devices ETF in his list, I also want exposure to the hospital services, biotech, and pharmaceutical side of the sector. The Vanguard Fund gives me all of that with 20% in biotech, 5% in services, and 25% in pharmaceuticals across over 450 companies in that healthcare space. The fund has produced an eye-popping 16.4% annual yield for more than a decade, enough for a five-fold return on your investment over that period. And Nation, I think healthcare could be the standout sector for this year and next. 
Besides one of the cheapest among the 11 stock sectors, all those services and the elective procedures that were postponed during the pandemic, they're gonna be coming back and could mean double digit sales growth for these companies. Click on the video to the right for how I analyze ETFs for my portfolio, a step-by-step -step to picking the best ETFs to buy. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.